Sunday morning. Goose is in the shower. Seven o'clock. Oh, let's have a look out the window. What a beautiful morning we got. There's the bikes. I think we've got about 35 degrees today. There's a church right over there. So all this in World War I was completely obliterated. There was nothing left standing. You can't believe the destruction, what was here. There was only just a few remains of that church. Couldn't find any beers last night. We couldn't find any beer. We couldn't find anywhere to open. Saturday night, half past seven, everywhere was closed. Mm, just everything's charged. <sighs> Get dressed. Push my teeth. Have a coffee. Oh, can you shiver it the bed? Oh, right, let's make a start. Well, good morning. Here we are in Lens. So, we're just now going to get to McDonald's, have a breakfast, go and fill up, put some fuel in. And then our first point of call is we're heading to a grave of Escobar, who couldn't make it. Um, his great-grandfather fought in World War I and died. So we found his grave. We're going to go and have a look, take some pictures of it for him. Because he's not here to see it. And then from there, we're heading over to Dieppe where Bear has got a relative's grave there, who died in World War II. We've got quite a lot of information about his story, and a lot of pictures. So that's quite a good story, that is. Then from Bear's, we will then head down to Chartres, where our uh, next hotel is, and we'll go into Chartres. There's a little story there as well about Chartres in World War II, so I'll go through that story. So, let's go and get some brekkie. Right, we've had breakfast. It's time to hit the road. What are we on? We're on day two. Can't believe a McDonald's that doesn't do Ash Browns. You're never pouring chip fat down, are you? Don't. Oh no, it's not chip fat. I don't. I don't. I don't even want to know what that is. Yeah. yeah. So which way? How'd you get out of here? No, you can't. That's no entry. Oh right. Cameras on. Okay then boys, let's do this. Gonna be a cooker today. We're already on 26 degrees. 26. Yep. It's going to be very, very warm today. Good morning, Francais. 
just think all this was rubble, everything obliterated. Right, we've got a green light. We've got the green light. Just go, go, go on, off you go then. Off you go. Yeah, go on then. We've got some cr some some cream on your nose there, Bear. No, just Vaseline. No. Oh. Just a thought, mate. Had that round his ass yeah. last night. At this rate, we might get there for 11 tonight. Hey, guess what? We're in France. Yeah, we should go past the Canadian Memorial. It's a massive, massive monument. Yes, yeah, so around here it was mainly the Canadians what did all the fighting in World War One. When you look at it, though, and how beautiful it all looks, the, what? Why war? Why war? My great uncle died in the First World War in France. Um, they should have told us why we could have found his grave. My my nana's brother. And he was only 18. Yeah, my George and we're only young. I think we're all going to have rosy cheeks after today. This sun's beautiful. Why have you got your Have you got your trousers off? No. Show me flower. And this part here, as we go past the Canadian Memorial, they've still got the World War One trenches you can go around. Yeah, I've just seen the Canadian flag there. So this is it. All this area here now was where the battle was. World War One. There, there's the Canadian Monument. Yeah. All the trenches, all the trenches are still here. Look at that. Should we have a quick look? Vimy, the Battle of Vimy. So we got a, got a picture of the bikes here, in front of it. Right over then, Craig. That's massive. Yeah, if we put them in front on like that. But if you look at the ground, over here all the grass, you can see where all the shells landed bombing them. Yeah, it's all been left, it's all been left untouched. Look at that. Yeah, that pont, pont, the, pont the hawk when it was the same. Yeah. And just further down here is you can do, there's a walk, you can go through all the trenches. Oh, that'll look good there with them flags. Can't imagine it, can you? Can't imagine it. Just imagine. There would have been trenches everywhere here. All down here, battling, fighting, killing, shooting, bombs going off. Has anybody got any Canadian relatives who want to put a cross down over here? So I've got six crosses in the back of my bike, get better who wants one. Wow. There you go, fellas. I'll leave you there. Amazing.
the winter of 1917 was the coldest France had seen in 40 years. In April, there was still snow on Vimy Ridge. The Germans controlled the ridge, and thousands of French and British lives had been lost trying to capture it. Now, it was the Canadians' turn. At 5 a.m. on Easter Monday, April 9th, 30,000 troops huddled below the ridge, many of them in subterranean caverns that had been dug, waiting for the signal. Zero hour was 5.30. The attack had been meticulously planned. Behind the lines, a replica of Vimy Ridge had been created, and the Canadians trained there until they knew the terrain as well as the Germans. They had detailed maps supplied by reconnaissance flights. If old Kaiser Bill only saw the preparations that had been made, wrote 21-year-old Lieutenant Claude Williams, he would throw up the sponge, I'm sure. Each of the four divisions had an objective indicated by a colored line. The black line was the enemy's forward defenses. The red line was the taking of Hill 145. The blue line included Hill 135 and the brown line was the German second line. The coordinated assaults were timed to the minute. At 5.30, more than 3,000 pieces of artillery roared. The first wave of 15,000 infantry stormed the ridge. The German machine guns were devastating, but the infantry pushed through to the front line trenches. By 6.15, the black line had been taken. Concealed by snow and smoke, the 1st Division advanced toward the red line. By 7 a.m., the German defenses had been cleared, although casualties were mounting. By 11 a.m., the blue line was in Canadian hands, and by 2 p.m., the brown line was secure. By the end of the following day, all that remained was the pimple, the northern tip of the ridge, which was defended by Prussian guards. At 5 a.m. on April 12th, the Canadians hit the pimple with heavy artillery. The 10th Brigade advanced and met with fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting. By 6 a.m., the position was taken. I am King of the Pimple, declared Brigadier General Edward Hilliam. Vimy was taken. Though the costs were high, 10,602 casualties, 3,598 dead. But in six days, the Corps had advanced five kilometers, taken Vimy Ridge, taken 4,000 prisoners, killed many of the enemy, and captured its guns. The grandest day the Corps has ever had, said Major General Arthur Curry. The attack was carried out exactly as planned. The sight was awful and wonderful. Vimy Ridge defined the Canadian Corps. It was filled with men who had been born in Britain, but they now considered themselves Canadian. They had proven themselves as an elite corps. They had accomplished what the French and British couldn't. Gregory Clark, an infantry lieutenant, wrote, as far as I could see south, north, along the miles of the ridge, there were Canadians, and I experienced my first full sense of nationhood. At home, the country felt the same way. Vimy Ridge became a touchstone of Canadian nationalism, our proudest moment in the war.
the memorial is, the other side. It's crazy, isn't it? Ja. So where are we now, are you? That's the... So we're, we're here. Yeah, so we drive down here and there's all the trenches. That, yeah, that's all the trenches. We could pass it on the way to Escobar's grave. Mm. Yeah, that's the memorial plaque. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's 10, isn't it? What's v, VWY monument? Uh, Vimy, that was the Battle of Vimy. This is it, we're in Vimy, the Battle of Vimy. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's a the sign. What? Trenches and tunnels that way. Oh, yeah. It's all, I think it's all in them trees, all the trenches and that. Right, come on then, boys. Let's make tracks. We've got a lot of mileage to cover. Right, we've just been had by security um, for Piggy to bring the drone down. Um, that we found out, not because it's a memorial site, but apparently it's private land now. So I don't know who owns the land. It might even be the Canadians actually who own the land, which is their memorial. So, out of respect, we have done what is requested. We have brought the drone in. We're not going to deliberately do anything to cause a, an offence. Is your camera on, Goose? Yeah, come past, but let me see if I can see your mic. We, ne we never checked, did we, yesterday? Come. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going under that tree in shade. Yeah, I'm going down there, I've had to sit in the shade. It's too hot. <laughs> I'll move further up then. Now I ain't sure if these are shell holes. Yeah, good luck. Danger. So there's obviously, the, the still might be on, on exploded mines and... Oh yes, there, look. This is a bit like that. Was it po Pond the Hop? Point. Point to hop. What a beautiful little place, though. I say, how beautiful all these woods look now. I bet it wasn't this beautiful at the time. No. Yeah, these have all been planted after. Yeah. Look at I mean, it's been absolutely shelled to hell. You watch a sheep in a minute explode. Look at the size, look at the size of that one. Look at the size of that. Jesus, look at that one. Yeah. yeah, there's another big one here as well. What a beautiful place it is now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what all the signs up, yeah. Well, obviously, you think none of these trees would have been here. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can see the trenches there. Look at the trenches. Yeah. So, the trenches the tre If we had time, it would have been nice to walk around them trenches, but we got we got too 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 much of a distance to cover today. Just can't imagine, can you, what was going on here? Can't imagine it. And you imagine that sound, 24 hours a day of just constant bombardment, explosions, people screaming, fucking squealing. There's one of the one of the main fields. 
So that field to the right there, you can see that open field, that was one of the main battlegrounds that was all trying to cross. And I'm pretty sure here, they're still finding remains. Well, Vimy, thank you for letting us pass through you. For paying our respects to you. Can't imagine what it must have been like at the time. And the sound of it. And how young everybody was.